respect that would produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English language until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings for the true and original name of our Father and His Son. Christ is a title just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit. And in this state, he is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state. Symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape and form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on the chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in this pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the Word or Son, a super incorporeal being that is having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form could only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. Later on, this self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now, there is only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question that we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and title may be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also at this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses and showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, holy place, and a court roundabout. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. The primary constitutional objectives and aims of the Institute are as follows. First, to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race or nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law, or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, and modern practical and occult science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. 
six, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eighth, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith, which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained. There is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And tenth, to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace. Our slogan is speak the truth. At this time, we will have a prayer by Dr. Brandon Craig. Our scripture for today is Jeremiah, the 34th chapter, to be read by Dr. Edward Bowman. I will be doing the announcements at the end of class. We will have a couple selections from the choir. And our readers for today will be Dr. Graciela Underwood and Dr. Brandon Craig. Good morning, class. Let's all bow our hearts and minds in a moment of prayer. Heavenly Father, Yahweh, thank you for bringing us here all together once again to learn something about your purpose, pattern, and plan as it operates throughout your creation. And thank you for the blessing of this gospel, for it truly is the judgment of the world. We ask that you turn aside these physical thoughts so that we may focus in on what the speakers uh, will present for us today through the Holy Spirit, which is Yahshua the Messiah. With all these blessings in the name of the Holy Spirit and our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah, let us all say hallelujah. Good morning, class. I'll be reading from uh, King James Version and, you know, uh, putting in the true names as necessary. And we're going to read Jeremiah, the 34th chapter. The word which came unto Jeremiah from Yahweh, when Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon and all his army and all the kingdoms of the earth of his dominion and all the people fought against Jerusalem and against all the cities thereof, saying, Thus saith Yahweh, the Elohim of Israel, Go and speak to Zedekiah, king of Judah, and tell him, Thus saith Yahweh, Behold, I will give this city into the hand of the king of Babylon, and he shall burn it with fire. And thou shalt not escape out of his hand, but thou shalt surely be taken and delivered into his hand. And thine eyes shall behold the eyes of the king of Babylon. And he shall speak with thee mouth to mouth, and thou shalt go to Babylon. Yet hear the word of Yahweh, O Zedekiah, king of Judah. Thus saith Yahweh of thee, Thou shalt not die by the sword, but thou shalt die in peace, and with the burnings of thy fathers, the former kings which were before thee. So shall they burn odors for thee, and they will lament thee, saying, Ah, Master, for I have pronounced the word, saith Yahweh. 
Then Jeremiah the prophet spake all these words unto Zedekiah, king of Judah and Jerusalem. When the king of Babylon's army fought against Jerusalem and against all the cities of Judah that were left against Lashis and against Ezekiah, for these defense cities remained of the cities of Judah. This is the word that came unto Jeremiah from Yahweh after the king Zedekiah had made a covenant with all the people which were at Jerusalem to proclaim liberty unto them, that every man should let his manservant and every man his maidservant, being a Hebrew or a Hebrewess, go free, that none should serve himself of them to wit of a Jew his brother. Now when all the princes and all the people which had entered into the covenant heard that every one should let his manservant and every one his maidservant go free, that none should serve themselves of them any more. Then they obeyed and let them go. But afterward they turned and caused the servants and the handmaids whom they had let go free to return and brought them into subjection for servants and for handmaids. Therefore the word of Yahweh came to Jeremiah from Yahweh, saying, Thus saith Yahweh, the Elohim of Israel, I made a covenant with your fathers in the day I brought them out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondmen, saying, At the end of seven years let ye go every man his brother, a Hebrew, which had been sold unto thee. And when he hath served thee six years, thou shalt let him go free from thee. But your fathers hearkened not unto me, neither inclined their ear. And ye were now turned, and had done right in my sight, in proclaiming liberty every man to his neighbor. And ye had made a covenant before me in the house which is called by my name. But ye turned and polluted my name, and caused every man his servant, and every man his handmaid, whom had set at liberty at their pleasure to return and brought them into subjection to be unto you for servants and for handmaids. Therefore, thus saith Yahweh, ye have not hearkened unto me in proclaiming liberty, every one to his brother and every man to his neighbor. Behold, I proclaim a liberty for you, saith Yahweh, to the sword, to the pestilence, and to the famine, and I will make you to be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth. And I will give the men that have transgressed my covenant, which have not performed the words of the covenant, which they had made before me, when they cut the calf in twain, and pass between the parts thereof. The princes of Judah and the princes of Jerusalem, the eunuchs and the priests and all the people of the land which had passed between the parts of the calf, I will even give them into the hand of their enemies and into the hand of them that seek their life, and their dead bodies shall be for meat under the fowls of heaven and to the beasts of the earth. And Zedekiah, the king of Judah, and his princes will I give into the hand of their enemies, and into the hand of them that seek their life, and into the hand of the king of Babylon's army, which are gone up from you. Behold, I will command, saith Yahweh, and cause them to return to this city, and they shall fight against it, and take it, and burn it with fire. And I will make the cities of Judah a desolation without an inhabitant. Jeremiah chapter 34. Good morning, class. I would like to remind everyone at this time to please quiet all cell phones and electronic devices so that class is not disturbed. Before we proceed any further, I would like to welcome our visiting brethren, 
We have uh, Dr. Clovis Screws, the dean of the Saginaw class with us. We have Dr. Paula Phillips, also from Saginaw. Dr. Kerry Brown, also from Saginaw. Dr. Jean Brown from Southfield. And we have first time visitor, visitors, excuse me, Latoya Shannon and Tejan and Prince. Did I get that right? All right, there we go. There's our first time visitors. I would like to thank all of you for coming today. It's an honor and a pleasure to have you here. Choir. That is fine. Ooh. We learn to believe it. He's the only righteous man. I try to do the best I can. He is the teacher. The truth is in the sun. We can leave it all behind. This carnal news. Yahshua is the truth. Yahshua has got plenty of beauty. And he gives all kinds of proof. Oh, in the meantime, means right now. That means right now, Yahshua's Holy Spirit is inside. Now I know Yahshua. So let's sing hallelujah, let's sing hallelujah, let's sing hallelujah, let's sing. Come on everyone, let's sing. Let every living thing, let every living thing praise 
let your problems get you down. Don't let the situation make you frown. Don't let the hard times get the best of you. Hold your head up and walk on through. I know it's hard to see your way. The devil's throwing darkness all in your way. Down by your top, stay in and fight. Yash will be there, he's away, the truth and the lie. He told me, all right, everything. He told me, all right, mm. don't let your problems get you down. Don't let the situation make you frown. Don't let the hard times get the best of you. Hold your head up and walk on through. I know it's hard to see your way. The devil's throwing darkness all in your way. Don't blow your top. Any further, we have a couple 
visiting members that have joined us that I would like to acknowledge, Dr. Jennifer Rogers and Kenneth Rogers, both from Saginaw. Thank you for coming today. It's an honor to have you here. All right, our first speaker for today will be our visiting brethren from the Saginaw class, Dr. Jean Brown. Southfield, I'm sorry. Good morning, class. Good morning. It is a pleasure to be here with the brethren. Uh, I haven't that much to say, but uh, just to say that I love Yahshua the Messiah and hope the brothers that's in this room also this feel the same way. Um, I don't have that much really on my heart and mind, just to be among the brethren. And um, that's really about it. So I'll give it. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Brown. Our next speaker will be the Dean of the Saginaw class, Dr. Clovis Screws. Well, I'd like to say good morning, and I um, thought I was going to get a chance to sit for a little while at least and, uh, and listen, you know, in that, but uh, I'm always happy to be able to come and fellowship with the brethren and to learn more of the purpose and plan of Yahweh through his son, Yahshua, the Messiah, as uh, given to us by this divine vision and revelation that was given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. And he said this, because we do have some first-time visitors here today. <clears throat> he said, I have been given a, a divine vision accompanied by a divine revelation of the vision by the creator of heaven and earth himself. He said, now don't believe me, but make me prove it till you're satisfied. Now, I don't know about you, but... <coughs> I was raised in the church. My dad uh, was a Baptist minister, and in all my church affiliations, I never heard one preacher say, make me prove it. It was pretty much, you know, God said this, God told me that, and believe me because he said it. You know, and uh, coming up as a child, I had a lot of questions. A lot of questions about the Bible, a lot of questions about just life in general, and I never really got any satisfactory answers. And um, upon being uh, introduced to this school, um, the, my friend um, Walter Daney had come to my house and uh, sat down and uh, we st he started introducing me to the gospel. And as I sat there, after he gave his spiel, I started asking him the questions that I had asked the preachers coming up through my life. And the miraculous thing to me at that time was that every question that I asked him, he went right in the book and let me read the answer. And, and my question to him at that time was, isn't this the same book that uh, my dad and all these other preachers have? And he said, yep. I said, well, why don't they know what you just let me read, he said, because it's revealed. And um, this thing is hidden in a mystery. And being in a mystery, it means that it is just not readily seen. You know, it is hidden, you know. And, um, you know, it's that old thing that you don't know, that you don't know, that you don't know. You know, and so coming into the school, um, all the questions and things that I had, you know, they, uh, they started answering the questions and it was to my satisfaction. 
And that's what the founder says, make me prove it till you're satisfied, right? And I have to say that over the years, I've been in class over 30 years, and over that time, I, have, I am thoroughly satisfied with the things that I have learned since coming to this school. And I had to, <clears throat> early in class, admit to myself that the things that I thought I knew were incorrect. You know, just everything that I thought I knew about God was incorrect, including the, the title God. So since we do have some first time visitors, I'm going to cover some basic things about this teaching. And one, the, the, one of the main things that we try to impart to people is that we use the true and original name and title of the Father, which is Yahweh, the Word or Son, which is Elohim, and the Holy Spirit, which is Yahshua the Messiah. Now, it is depicted here in Hebrew. We are not Hebrew. The name Yahweh is not Hebrew. Now, this is what I want you to understand, because people in the world say, well, that's that Hebrew name. But it is not Hebrew. Yahweh had his name before there was ever a Hebrew. OK, see, if Yahweh is the father now, Romans, somebody get me Romans 1 and 19. I'm going to try to make this as basic as I can. Do we have a, a can, is the other side of that board? usable. We don't need it right yet. You know, a little later. Okay, I just want to make sure, you know. Somebody got that for me? Read loudly, please. Romans they got readers. Romans 1, 19 okay. 20. <laughs> uh -huh. Because that which may be known of Yahweh. Now, see, it says, because that which may be known of Yahweh or God, okay, I'm going to kind of interchange them for the sake of our new person. Okay, so, so, there are some things about God that you can know, is the point. Okay, read. Is manifest in them. And is manifest in them, and he's actually talking about the children of Israel, but read. For Yahweh has showed it unto them. He has showed his purpose through the, through the children of Israel, read. For the invisible things of him. Now, Yahweh, as the moderator said, is spirit. OK, and we depict him on that chart over there as a cloud, but Yahweh is not a cloud. He chose a cloud because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape and form. Now, spirit is invisible, right? OK, so it says for the invisible things of him. So Yahweh or God is spirit and he is invisible for the invisible things of him. Read. From the creation of the world. By understanding the creation that he made, the creation of the world, read. Are clearly seen. Now you can see invisible things clearly. Now that sounds like total opposites, right? You know, how are you going to see invisible things clearly? Read. Being understood by the things that are made. By understanding the things that he made you can understand something spiritual. Or in other words, it takes the natural things to understand the spiritual things, right? So you, you have um, a natural example. Are these your children? Yeah, okay, your children, okay. Okay, so now, let, let me use me for an example, okay? My dad's name is Clovis McKenzie Screws Sr., okay? Now, I came in my father's name my, my name is Clovis McKenzie Screws Jr., right? Now, I did not determine what my father's name was going to be. Is that right? Okay, because I wasn't even thought of when he received his name, right? So if you look at it, taking a natural to understand the spiritual, if my father represents now the father, he had his name before I came here, right? And so then once I come here, he gives me my name, right? Okay? So when I get grown, you know, or think I'm grown, then I decide that I want to change his name. Does that work? It don't work, right? See, so now from a natural standpoint, that don't work. So from a spiritual standpoint, how is it that Yahweh had his name before he created any creation, then he gave his name to Moses, told Moses, this is what my name is. Okay? Already had his name. Moses just happened to be of the Hebrew lineage. 
So those were the first people that he gave the name to. But it is a universal name. It is a name that came right, right out of spirit. You see what I mean? See, so now, then all of a sudden, down here at the end, his children, whom he made, decide they want to change his name to Lord, God, Jesus, Adonai, Buddha, Allah, whatever they want to change it to. Do you think he's happy with that? No, he's not happy with that. See, so now, if it takes the natural to understand the spiritual, then being proper children, then we're going to reverence our father, we're going to respect our father, and we're going to call him what he wants to be called. Is that right? So now they tell us, they say, you folks down there at that school, y'all, all, all do is harp on that name. Well, that's not really, look, Yahweh is the one that harped on the name because it is important to him. It appears in your Bible over 5,000 times. They took it out and put Lord, God, and Jesus. Now, this, this Lord is a title. It is not a name, okay? Now, you don't put the in front of, front of a proper name. What's your first name? Kalen. I wouldn't say the Kalen. That's not proper English, right? See? But I'll say the man, right? Or the school teacher or something like that because a title you can put the, the in front of. So you don't put the in front of a proper name. So it, Lord is not a name because they say the Lord, right? You don't put, and God is a title also. Now, Lord is English. You know, you, you have the house of Lord, Lords in England, you know, and, and so forth and so on. You can buy this title of Lord, okay? Then you have God is German. Comes from God. You heard of things being gaudy? Okay? All right? Comes from G-A-W-D. You know, when I was in church and we used to sing, they told us don't sing God, sing God. Because that makes it sound right. Okay? See? <laughs> so, so God is a title, a, a German deity, actually, that the Germans worship. Jesus is a combination of two de deities, Lay and Zeus. Lay spelled I-E, which is a Babylonian sky god of fertility, and Zeus is the Greek sky god. See, so now, when they hung Yahshua on the cross, they put a, uh, an inscription above his head. And you see it here in Greek, I-N-R-I, okay? Now, that's supposed to mean Jesus of Nazareth, king of the Jews, but you don't see a J, okay? Because the J did not exist, like the, the uh, moderator said. The J, there is no J in the Hebrew language to this day, the Greek language or the Latin language, and there was no J in the, even in the English language until some 1,400 years after the Messiah died. And whether or not, now let me just say this, whether or not there was ever a J in the English language is a moot point because the Messiah was a Hebrew, okay? And he had a Hebrew name, see? So now, it doesn't, it, 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 isn't, it is improper for them to change or took these names out and put in the local deities. What I want you to understand is the world never gave up their gods, they were worshiping all these gods, all these deities, and all they did was took their gods and inserted them in the book. Now, Christ is a title also. Christ comes from Krishna, which is the eighth manifestation of the Hindu god. Now, Krishna is depicted riding on a beast with knives all through his body. All right? So now, you got English, German, Babylonian, Greek, and Hindu. See? So now, the, the Messiah, or, or Yahweh, gave his name to the Hebrews first. That's why they say it's a Hebrew name. Okay? We've clarified that it's not a Hebrew name, but that's who he gave it to first. Right? See, so now, this is Hebrew. You don't read this, right? This is a yod, hey, a wall, and a hey. Okay? You say, what's that? Right? See, the yod is equivalent. Now, see, let me say this. 
There's a difference between translating and transliterating, okay? To translate is to change from one language to another. To transliterate is to get an exact equivalent, okay? So now, it, this Hebrew, they write from right to left. We write from left to right. Is that right? Okay. So now, look. It's, it's, okay, let me say it like this. They started right and went wrong. We started wrong to go right. Okay? Anyway. So now. <laughs> now, so you have your yod, which is equivalent to the, our letter Y. Your hey, which is equivalent to our letter H. And your wa, which is equivalent to our letter W. And your hey again which is equivalent to our H, okay? This is called the tetragrammaton. Tetra means four, gramma means letters, okay? And when you look up the, the word tetragrammaton, it will tell you the four Hebrew letters making up the ineffable name of God, usually transliterated, not related, right, as Y-H-W-H, then it will say or, J-H-V-H, -H, or and then it'll give some other variations. Now, if we understand what I said earlier, that the J didn't exist, then it couldn't be J-H-V-H, -H, okay? And, 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 and it will say Yahweh or Jehovah, right? So now, if the letter J didn't exist, then that means that this name is wrong. That also means no J, no Jesus, right? So now... When you look up the name Jehovah, it'll tell you an improper or impossible rendering of the name of God, probably properly Yahweh. And it says impossible because the J didn't exist. OK, so now if it takes a natural to understand the spiritual, when you're looking at this YHWH, these four consonants, in our English language, we can't pronounce words without vowels. Is that correct? See, so now what has to happen is you have to insert vowels. Now, the Hebrews had diacritical marks above and below the line that told them how to pronounce this. And what they did was because Yahweh would, would kill them when they used this name improperly, they put the diacritical marks that told them to say Adonai or Lord in the place when they saw that. You know, which is, again, improper. Yahweh never told them to do that. That's what they did, right? So you have Y-H-W-H, -H, and you can't pronounce that. It's uh, unpronounceable, okay? So now, in order to be able to pronounce this, you have to put vowels in there. So we tell you that Yah is the masculine portion of the father's name, and Way is the feminine portion of the father's name. So now, Adam was the, remember Romans 19, 1, 19 to 20 says, you understand spiritual things by the things that are made? So he made the man, right? And he called the man named Adam. Is that right? So now, Adam is the father of us all physically, right? And the first woman was Eve. She's the mother of us all physically. The only vowel in the name Adam is A. And the only vowel in the name Eve is E, for Yah being a masculine portion and Way being a feminine portion of the father's name. Yahweh is masculine and feminine within himself. He did not need a Mrs. God to create anything. OK, see, now that's the thing. You, OK, God is a masculine title. Goddess is a feminine title. You see what I mean? Yahweh is masculine and feminine within himself. He is complete. Now, he made the man in this way. Somebody get me Genesis. See? So now you got Adam, A, Eve, E. Male, female. You say, well, that's y'all just stuck that in there. You know, that ain't how that worked. That, you know, y'all just stuck that in there. See? So now your vowels are what? A, E. I O U sometimes Y, which takes the place of I. So when you do your research on the J, the J came from the I and the I came from the Y. Okay? 
Now, did you find that for me? Genesis 1 and 26. Hold on, we got a question here. Go ahead, young man. You found it? Oh, okay, they, they're going to read it for us. You read it along with them. Okay, go ahead and read. 1 and 26. And God said, let us make man in our image. Uh-huh, so now Elohim is, is whom they substituted for God. He said, let us make man in our image, right? Read. After our likeness. After our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. Uh-huh. And over the fowl of the air. Uh-huh. And over the cattle. Uh-huh. And over all the earth. And all over all the earth. Read. And over every creepy, creeping thing that uh -huh. creepeth upon the earth. Mm-hmm. Get me a... Uh, uh, um, where it says he made a male and female. Mm, next. So Elohim created man in his own image. Uh-huh. In the image of Elohim created he him. Uh-huh. Male and female. Now, he, he says he made man in his own image. In the image of Elohim created he them, right? Male and female. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Created he him. Male and female created he them, right? And blessed them and called their name what? And called their name Adam. Okay? So the man Adam was created both male and female. Okay? When Yahweh created the man, the man was created in what's called a homorphodidic state. Okay? He had both male and female reproductive organs. Okay? Now children are born that way today. And the doctors, if you have a child and it's a homorphodite, the doctor will come to you and say, what do you want, a boy or a girl? And then they'll do an operation, you know, and give you what you want. Now, that what they ought to do is wait and see what it is. You see what I'm saying? You know, because they might change that boy into a little girl and he really a boy. You see what I'm saying? You know, but, you know, they so smart now. See, so now he made that man male and female. Then what he did was he put the man to sleep and he went into his side and he took out the rib and the womb. Now, your King James Bible says he took out the rib, but your Holy Name Bible says he took out the womb. Which one is correct? Both are correct. Because, and the way you know that is when he brings the woman to the man, the man says, this is now bone of my bone, you took my rib, and flesh of my flesh, you took my womb. Therefore, she shall be called womb man, for she was taken out of the man. Is that right? See, so now Yahweh, in his pure spirit state, is male and female, right? So Yahweh took on a shape and form within himself, known as Yahweh Elohim. He is the father and mother of us all spiritually. And the creation came forth out of him, representing Eve, okay? Like Eve came forth out of Adam, the creation came forth out of Yahweh Elohim, representing Eve, okay? So now, that's why they call it Mother Earth, is that right? And everything that Yahweh made is female in his sight. Even me. Right? You. So now you are a reflect of that male and female in that you have both male and female hormones in your body. Is that right? See, so now if we go back over here, we have again Adam representing the male and Eve representing the female. Right? So when you look at it in your body, you have your hormones, right? So the uh, female hormone is what? Estrogen with an E. Is that right? What is the male hormone? Androgen with an A. Okay? So male and female, right? So the man came first, Adam, and then the woman. Is that right? So now when you look at this name Jehovah, See, Yahweh, the man came first, then the woman. Look at Jehovah. It's backwards because they got the woman first, then the man. It's just out of order. You see what I mean? And so, and the way they got this was they took the vowel points from Adonai, which means Lord, and they placed it in the tetragrammaton to come up with this. You see what I'm saying? Totally out of order. Okay? See, so now when the moderator is talking... They says that Lord is improper and that God is improper, but it says that Jesus is erroneous. <laughs> is that right? 
Is that what the moderator says? You see what I'm saying? So now erroneous means what? Gross error. Error in the worst way. You know, so why is it error in the worst way? Because salvation is in the name. See, so now if, if, the, if, if Yahweh set it up that you must call on the name of Yahshua in order to be saved, the satanic spirit does this. It says, oh, you don't need to call on that. That name ain't important. Call him what you want. Go to the church of your choice. We don't care how you deceive. Just go get deceived. You see what I'm saying? See, but no, Yahweh said that there is a whole lot of ways, a whole lot of truths, and a whole lot of life, right? He didn't say that. What did he say? He said he is the way, singular, the truth, singular, the life, right? See, so now no man come to the Father but by him, Yahshua the Messiah, right? So now if you don't have Yahshua, you don't have no hope of salvation. You see what I mean? So now Yahweh said, Yahshua said this, uh, John 5 and 39. <coughs> I'm John. trying to be as basic as, as I can because, see, all of us came in here at one point, right? And somebody took the time to be basic and as elementary as they could with me. See, and I love them for that. You see what I mean? And we just ought to have enough love for those who, you know, come in and, you know, whom we embrace to give them the things that got us. See, because this was devastating to me, man. You know? You know? Look. Walter say, he say, look, the J ain't but uh, 400 years old. And uh, I say, okay. So what was his name then, man? He said it was Joshua. <laughs> Somebody get that for me, read. Little voice in my head say, don't get mad. He telling you the truth. I wanted to get mad, though. And Walter will tell you, you know, we took karate together, you know. And uh, he said that later, he said, you know, when I came over, he said, I thought I was going to have to fight, you know. <laughs> but Yahweh didn't let that happen, right? And I thank him for that. Okay, so Mike, 5, 30, John 5 and 39. John 5 and 39. Right. Search the scriptures. Now, see, we know that you've searched the scriptures. Everybody go in that book, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, right? See, you go in there, this is my psalm for the day. You know, this scripture is for me, you know. But let's find out what it's really about. Read. You, you search the scriptures, read. For in them ye think ye have eternal life. Now you life. think you got eternal life in these scriptures. Now there's another scripture, since you want to grab one, that says, your, your ways are not my ways. Now there are your ways, my ways, your ways, right? Now I'm, I'm misquoting that. We need to read it. Huh? What? Quote it. Your thoughts are not my thoughts. Neither my thoughts, your thoughts, right? Your way, Isaiah, my ways, your ways. Isaiah 55. Read it, please. <laughs> Because I just messed that up real bad. Isaiah 55 and 8. Uh -huh. My thoughts are not your now, thoughts. Now, Yahweh says, my thoughts are not your thoughts, Read. Neither are your ways my ways. Neither are your ways my ways. So now, you, he told them, think not, right? <laughs> See, so that's what we think. We think that book's talking about us. But that ain't what it is. Because when Yahweh set it up, he set it up for a purpose. Go back to 5 and 39. <coughs> John me. 5 and 39. Uh -huh. Search the scriptures. Now you search the scriptures. For in them you think you have now, eternal life. Now you go life. thinking again. They were thinking and they were wrong. Right? In them you think you have eternal life. Read. And they are they which testify of me. What? See, so now the scriptures testify of Yahshua the Messiah. It ain't about me walking through the valley of the shadow of death. Because I ain't walked through the valley of the shadow of death. You see what I'm saying? He did. You see what I mean? <coughs> see? <laughs> he did. Not me. Not you. You see what I'm saying? So he said, read on. Keep reading. 
40, and ye will not come to me that uh -huh. ye might have eternal life. Now, he life. said, you won't come to me that you might have life, but everybody going to Jesus. But his name's Joshua. Read. I receive not honor from men. Wait a minute. Everybody honoring Jesus, even them that don't know him. The Muslims say Jesus was a good prophet, right? Everybody honoring Jesus. See, well, is the book going to be a liar? No, because his name is Joshua. Now, you want to get a rise out of them and say, look, it ain't Jesus, it's Joshua. You know, and that little old lady that you thought was so pious and nice will cuss you out. <laughs> See, be ready to fight. You understand? Read. But I know you that ye have not the love of Yahweh in now, you. Now, he told them, he said, I know you. You don't have the love of my father in you. Read. I am come in my father's name. Now, he said that he come in his father's name. Right? Read. And ye receive me not. And you don't receive me. Read. If another shall come in his own name, uh -huh. him ye will receive. Okay, so now he said, I come in my father's name. Now, I told you my name was Clovis McKenzie Screws Jr. And my father's name is Clovis McKenzie Screws, right? So I came in my father's name. You can't get it no tighter than that, right? So then Yah Yahweh, Yahshua said, I come in my father's name. Now, I told you that Yah was the masculine portion of the name. So his, he is a son, Yah, come in his father's name, not his mother's. He come in his father's name. And Shua in Hebrew means salvation. So the name Yahshua means Yahweh is salvation. That's what it means. And the reason why it, is, why it is so important to call on the name of Yahshua, not just because Yahweh said so, but that because calling on the name of Yahshua, you are acknowledging that Yahweh is salvation. If you call on anything else, you are not acknowledging that Yahweh is salvation. You are not acknowledging that Yahweh took on a shape and form that he manifested in the flesh and died for your sins. You are denying that in calling on anything else other than the name of Yahshua. You see that? See, so now, this thing is threefold. Father, Word of Son, Holy Spirit. And what he did was he gave us a pattern by which we can come to an understanding of him. And when he, when he commissioned Moses at the burning bush to go down into Egypt to bring the children of Israel out, he called Moses a top Mount Sinai, and he showed him this tabernacle pattern in a vision. See? So now this pattern consists of a most holy place. Visible and invisible goes according to this threefold tabernacle pattern. See, so you have your most holy place, holy place, court roundabout. So the basic building block of, of matter is an atom. Is that correct? An atom has a proton, like your most holy place, a neutron, like your holy place, and an electron that does what? Goes around about, right? See, so now when you look at your periodic table, all of the atoms have protons, neutrons, and electrons, except the one, which is the, um, the hydrogen atom, which shows the uh, neutron and an electron. It shows a proton and an electron? Doesn't show the neutron? Okay, and that invisible part shows forth the invisible Yahweh. It's there, but they just can't see it. See? So now everything is threefold in its makeup. You, you speak in the past, the present, or the future. You eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner with a knife, a fork, and a spoon, right? You work eight hours. They say good night, sleep in eight hours, and that leaves eight more hours in a 24-hour day. Is that right? So now the children of Israel, when they come up out of Egypt, the Egypt is likened unto that quarter roundabout, okay? And in that quarter roundabout, it had an altar of sin sacrifice, which they took the sacrifice and they put the sacrifice, took, put the blood on the four horns and they burned that sacrifice here. They had washed that sacrifice in the laver, you know, and the high priest had to be anointed with oil before he could administer in, uh, uh, at the age of uh, 30, um, before he could administer as high priest. Okay? So now you got blood, 
water, and spirit is what this represents, okay? 1 John 5 and 7, King James Bible. And then, or death, burial, and resurrection. Now, these are the witnesses that Yahweh have given to testify to Yahshua the Messiah. See, so now he set it up according to the law and the testimony. Isaiah 8 and 20 says, to the law, which the law is the first five books of your Bible, and to the testimony, which is the next 34 books of your Bible, from Joshua to Malachi, or the Old Testament, it says, to the law and to the testimony, if they speak, or not, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there's no light in them. See, I'm, I'm <laughs> leave me alone. <laughs> They're teasing me now. See, so um, the, to the law and the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it's because there's no light in them. Now, this is significant because if it says that there are many false messiahs that would come, you know, and many would come in the name of Yahshua. And, but Yahshua just told you, he said, I come in my father's name, you receive me not. Let another come in his own name, him you would receive. That's Jesus. That's that other that come in his own name that they've received. Now, the way, how will you know? I ask people, I say, who died on the cross for you? They say, Jesus. I say, well, how did he do it? They, say, they nailed him to the cross and they hung him up there on the cross. See, but that's not how the thing work. Okay? That's the end result. Okay? Who did it according to the law and the testimony? This is what's going to tell you who's the correct one. This is your measuring rod by which you can judge to find out if you got the right Savior. You see what I'm saying? Because if they didn't do it according to the law and the testimony, they are out of order. See, that's why it is important for you to go back to the law and the testimony and learn about the type shadows and allegories back there so that you can see that Yahshua Messiah came in to fulfill them, not to institute a Christian example for you to follow, which you cannot find in the book. See, so now that he come in to fulfill, you know, and when you understand that he's fulfilling, then you, you can understand if you got the right one or not. So now they told us Jesus came in to set up a Christian example for us to follow. That because he was baptized, we have to be baptized as an as a outward show of inward grace. And because he ate the, the, the last supper, it was the last supper, <laughs> right? Because he ate the last supper, we have to eat the everlasting supper. Because they eat it every Sunday, you know, at Catholic church, or every chance they get. And then the Baptist church once a month, Jehovah's Witnesses eat it once a year. Only select people, though. See? Am I right, Doc? Only select folks, see? See? So the 144,000, that's another story. You know, you got to come back, see? See, so now, did I have something that we were reading? First John 5 and 7. Right. For there are three that bear record in heaven. See, now there are three that bear record in heaven. Read. The Father. The Father. The Word. The Word. And the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit. Now they're represented by this Ark of the Covenant. You got the two cherubims and the mercy seat. This is a three-in-one gold piece. Okay? This tabernacle pattern will explain everything. Okay? There are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. Read. And these three are one. Uh-huh. And there are three that bear witness in uh, earth. Now, there are three that bear witness in earth, and that would be who? The Jehovah's Witnesses, the Catholics, and the Baptists, right? No? No, David? Who is it? Read. The Spirit. Whoa. Okay, so it's the Spirit represented by this holy cup of anointing oil. And the water. The water represented by the labor. And the blood. And the blood represented by the blood being placed on this altar. Those are the witnesses. This is what you look for when you're lining up the scriptures. You know, blood, it says, with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people, right? To whom he said, this blood, water, spirit, or death, burial, resurrection is the rest wherewith they may cause the weird to rest. And this is the refreshing. That's uh, Jeremiah 31, 31, right? See? So now, it, it, when you're looking at it, you got blood, 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 down to Yahshua. 
Water, 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 water down to Yahshua. Spirit, 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 spirit down to Yahshua. See, pointing to him. So you have to line those principles up in order to know that you got the right one. That is what's important that you have the right one. See, because you can't believe. Bring that, that uh, thing up here, see? You know? <coughs> Excuse me. I don't know why I get the coughing and carrying on. You know, I have one under my seat somewhere, you know, and I probably drank all of them. So. Right. <laughs> we got that. Thank you. Let's I put this right here. Thank you. So, use black. Okay. There we go. How do you spell believe? The E, right? So they say, just believe. Believe. That's all you got to do is believe. But see, right in the middle of what you believe could be a lie. Is that right? See? And so what you have to have is some witnesses, right? You have to have some proof. You have to have some verification of what it is that you call yourself believing in. See? So now, when the children of Israel, and I'm going to keep this for a minute because I want to share one thing before I sit down. Children of Israel come out of Egypt again. Uh, Egypt is like the court around about. They come through the divided waters of the Red Sea. That's like that veil. Okay? When they come through into the holy place, which this is the holy place where they camped and they stayed out here for 40 years. So they had the death of the lamb with the blood. They placed the blood on the door, uh, upper door post, two side posts in the basin. And I'm cutting this up. You got to come back, you know. And, and um, so you had blood, you had water with the Red Sea. They followed a cloud, which represents spirit. So that's your blood, water, spirit. Then they spent 40 years in the wilderness out here. See, so that's your blood, water, spirit, and the fourth step is the door <clears throat> leading into the holy place. And then you had the River Jordan, which is likened to this sixth step or the second veil, which divided the holy place from the most holy place. Now, in the holy place, you had your altar of incense, your seven-branch candlestick, and your table of showbread, okay? It was light. It could never be dark in here. At um, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, they lit this, and they put it out at 9 in the morning. During the day, the sun lit this area. Then you had your altar of incense where they offered up a sweet-smelling savor to the nostrils of Yahweh, which was an intercessor. And you had your table of showbread, which is the high priest's daily sustenance, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. So in the holy place, when they were out here for 40 years, this cloud that was upon this mount at 3 o'clock in the afternoon turned into fire. And then it went out and changed back into a cloud at 9 in the morning. So light in the daytime from the sun and light from the fire at night. So they were never in any darkness out here, just like they, this could never have any darkness. When they got out here, we were talking in the, in the, um, the pre-class thing about the baby in the womb, right? And that child being in the womb, they call it a what? A fetus, right? So the first thing they did when they got out here is they started crying, feed us, <laughs> right? Feed us, because they represent that baby in the womb, see? So now uh, uh, they're out here, so what Yahweh did was he rained down manna which is that bread, and had quail come, right? <clears throat> so for the whole time they was out here, they had quail on toast every day. And they got had it so much they hated it. You see what I'm saying? But anyway, Yahweh is the one that fed them out here, right, for those 40 years. The baby is in the womb for 40 weeks, right? Same principle, because it gets his food from the placenta. Right? And this is representative of the placenta that where the food came from Yahweh or from heaven. See? So anyway, you have your, your dividing veil here to go into the most holy place, which is representative of Canaan land. Okay? So this is the greater and more perfect tabernacle, which Yahweh made and not the man. See? So now Yahweh has set this thing up, you know, that everything goes according to the pattern. Right? So now this is what I want to share with you. Now, uh, you wouldn't know that uh, I'm supposed to be 
an artist by the, went to school for architecture. I'm going to be real crude here, okay? United States of America, right? Okay? So now, out here on the East Coast, they got coal mines and steel mills, right? Right? Then you got your Great Lakes. Now, I watch the, the, the Discovery Channel and the History Channel and all that, and they say that the Great Lakes are under a basin. And that basin, they call it a basin, and it's made of shale. And under it is salt. Under it, because, you know, in Detroit now, they got salt mines under, under it, right? Under it is salt. So this laver or this basin contains the water. Okay, I'm just going to draw it right here for you, but this is where it is, right? And then you have your spirit, they call Chicago the Windy City, right? But you got a, a chain of mountains that come through here that's representative of that veil, right? So it, when you come out here into these states, these are called the plain states, right? And so what do you have out here? What, according to your pattern, what should be there? Okay, so you should have... Your table of showbread with the, with the 12 loaves of bread, because they got the, 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 the plain states, right, with the wheat and the barley and all that, right? And then down here in Texas, what they got? What they put in the lips there? Oil, right? And Arizona's got what? Clean air. Is that right? That's what they say, right? So then you got another chain of mountains that come through, right? Then you get out here and you got what? The city of lost angels, right? So now you got, you got angels all on the, the, the uh, veil and all on the walls. You got angels all on the veil and all on the walls, right? See? So then Los Angeles is known for the smog, right? Because Yahweh said he would dwell between the wings of the cherubim in the form of a cloud. Is that right? See? So now out here, this chain of mountains, this is gold. This is gold right here. This is brass. Is that right? So when you watch the, the uh, uh, History Channel, all them, the Discovery Channel, when the tectonic plates pushed and pushed the mountains up, then you got gold that came up with it. Is that right? See? So now they had the great gold rush back in the day. They come out here and get that gold, right? Because it's going according to your pattern. And then in, in, in Nevada, they got silver mines and gold mines. Right? So you got your oil down here, right? So then in upper Michigan, what they mining for? Copper, right? So brass is made out of copper and tin. Is that right? See? See, so now everything goes according to the pattern. So now maybe you can understand why Dr. Keeley had the vision in Ohio, okay, which is in the court roundabout where the, the anointing had to take place, the holy cup of anointing oil and why he had to move the headquarters to the most holy place. But America is set up backwards because the most holy, the headquarters is down here in Washington, D.C. Is that right? See, so now the high priests are, according to your pattern, was, you know, you had high priests, right? And they were in office how long? For 20 years, high priests, right? From 30 to 50, right? So when you do your research, you'll find out that every American president who represents the high priest that was elected on the 20-year cycle was assassinated or impeached or died in office because at 50, they had to retire, okay? Until you got down to Ronald Reagan. He was shot, right? He was uh, elected on the, on the cycle, right? He was shot, so why didn't he die? Because there were four points of blood with him, you see, you know, there were four points of blood, four people got shot. And then it rained that day, they administered oxygen to him, right? He was the 40th president, okay? But Dr. Kelly said the end was 1960. Kennedy was the last one under that thing that died under that 20-year cycle thing. So it had to show a change in the priesthood afterwards Reagan got shot, but he didn't die. You see what I mean? See, so now, there's a whole lot more to this. I just, you know, you need to get in there and look at it. 
when you're watching your, your channels, you know, I love the History Channel and the Discovery Channel and the Science Channel and all that. You see what I'm saying? Because everything that Yahweh has made shows forth his purpose. You see what I'm saying? Everything that he's made is another reflect or another manifestation of what's going on with him. And you can't get away from it. See, you can say, I don't believe all you want to, but you are responsible. See what I'm saying? He has set it up in a way that you are without excuse. Because you say, I don't believe in that Yahweh. I want to keep my Jesus. I ain't going out of that school no more. I'm headed for the door. Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh. You see what I'm saying? You understand? See? <laughs> and guess what? You get out there, you get in your car, open the door, yeah, shut it, boom, way. <laughs> See? You, can, you can't get away. See? So now, I ain't going to hold up all the time because we all here to eat, you know. And, and so anyway, I hope that you got something out of that. And to our first time visitors, please come back, you know, and study with us. You know, we are, we are uh, uh, always so happy to have people come and sit, you know, and if you stay, we're even more happy, you know, and um, there's no greater place, you know, uh, than amongst the brethren. You see what I'm saying? So thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Screws. Our next uh, speaker for today will be the dean of our school, Dr. Terry Wolf. All right, thank you. Well, good afternoon. I uh, very much enjoyed that, and I'm sure you did too. It was just an excellent introduction to the teaching and summary of all kinds of things pertaining to it. It was just really good. Uh, yeah. Um, now, he mentioned a couple of things that just caught my attention. Well, there were several things that did, but uh, I, I can't talk as fast as he did. So, <laughs> uh, so I just got to uh, focus on just a couple of things. One of the things he was talking about is the fact that this doesn't come because we figured it out, but it's revealed. Okay, it's been in the Bible. Proof's been in front of us, both in the Bible and the creation. In fact, your own body is the proof of this teaching. But we didn't understand it, so therefore Yahweh had to actually make us understand or reveal to us. Now, let me get you a scripture, if you would, please. Get the 11th chapter of the book of Matthew. <clears throat> Start about the 25th verse. And uh, I want to show you that Yahshua the Messiah, the Savior himself, is talking about this. And uh, then also, if you'd go back also, another reader, get Deuteronomy 29, 29. And uh, First Corinthians, the second chapter maybe around the ninth verse. If you just get those. Matthew mm -hmm. eleven twenty five. Yes, ma'am. At that time, Yahshua answered and said, mm -hmm. I thank thee, O Father, sustainer of heaven and earth. Okay, now this is a prayer from Yahshua to Yahweh, to the heavenly Father, okay? You think he's lying to him? <laughs> Don't think so, okay? So he says, I thank you, O Father, sustainer, ruler, king of heaven and earth. Go ahead. Because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent. Now, see, this is what he was talking about. It's hidden. Okay? And it's like the name of Yahweh. And he was showing you how you breathe the name Yahweh. Okay? And you do it silently most of the time. And until you're under some major stress where you have to really go for it. <sighs> It's silent, right? 
And that's literally an example of hiding the truth right under your nose. Right? Hiding right under your nose, been there all the time. Yahweh has hidden these things from the wise and from the prudent, from those that think they've figured it out, from those who are formally educated, in other words, anything where what Paul called man's wisdom. There's a difference between the wisdom of Yahweh and the wisdom of man. So he says, I thank you, Yahweh, or O Father, that you hid these things from the wise and the prudent, those that have the wisdom of man. Please read. And has revealed them unto babes. And yet Yahweh revealed them. And he revealed them unto who? Unto babes. Now, the disciples that were with Yahshua the Messiah, they got into a big dispute one time, and I think you can read this for yourself. I think you'll find it in the 18th chapter of the book of Matthew. And basically what was happening was they were trying to argue amongst themselves which one of them was going to be the greatest. Okay? They were already vying for position. And I want you to understand something. They did not even have the Holy Spirit at that time. A lot of people think that the apostles had the Holy Spirit and they did not have the Holy Spirit until the Holy Spirit was given on the day of Pentecost. Uh, in fact, it says that in the 7th chapter of John, 38th, 39th verse. It says the Holy Spirit was not yet given because Yahshua was not yet glorified. And he wasn't glorified until he died, buried, raised, and ascended, and the Father glorified him. Okay? And in fact, there's other scriptures that talk about the fact that the apostles, I'm talking about those 12 men that walked with Yahweh, with Yahweh, with Yahweh day and night, so forth and so on. It says even when Yahshua uh, preached the gospel to them and said that he had to go and die and bury and be resurrected, it says they understood none of these things, nothing. They didn't understand, okay? But yet they were vying for position. They were trying to figure out which one of them was going to be the greatest in the kingdom. What did Yahshua do? Do you remember? He took a little child and he set the little child in the midst of them. And he says, unless you become as this little child, you won't even enter into the kingdom. or a teacher come from Elohim and the reason we know it is because no man can do the things you do except Elohim be with him okay? and we ought to confess and recognize once you've tried and, and found out that this teaching comes from Yahweh Elohim because nobody else can use the Bible use the creation And he was head and shoulders that was in this age in dispensation. And not because Henry Clifford Kinley was a wonderful or educated or wise or prudent person on his own. It's because Yahweh revealed it unto him. That was a hard thing for me to really get, wrap my mind around. Because I was conditioned before this to not do anything that somebody would call, here was the expression we were taught, don't, don't go for anything that's extra biblical. In other words, outside of the Bible. And of course, anything that was outside the Bible was anything that wasn't verbatim. That means word for word exactly what was in the Bible. So in other words, in somebody's ideas, what that would mean is this, that unless it was in the Bible where it said, I, Yahweh, will reveal myself to a man named Henry Clifford Kinley in 1931 in Springfield, Ohio, then that's extra biblical. That was the conditioning that I had. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. And there's a lot of fear that is injected into people in their religious teachings. Fear and hate. Okay. And, and, and really, when people say, you got to have faith, most of the time, what they're really doing on is playing on people's fear and doubt. Okay? So, and, I, and I've run into a lot of people that want to claim, oh, they have faith, but boy, if you confront them with the truth, even out of the Bible, immediately, fear, doubt, rejection. And that was the way I was conditioned. So it was hard for me to really accept that Yahweh revealed this to Dr. Kinley, rather than... Dr. Kinley went in the Bible and figured it out, okay? So there's a difference between Yahweh hiding things from the wise and the prudent, reveal them unto babes, you see what I'm saying? Now, when he said to Nicodemus about this, Nicodemus was one of the wise and prudent of his time. 
He was a teacher, a rabbi, one of the chief rulers and teachers of the people. And he came to Yahshua wanting to know one very simple thing. How can I enter into the kingdom of heaven? And Yahshua knew what was on that man's heart even before the man spoke it. And he told him this. Okay, Remember, like I said, Yahshua told his apostles, you got to become as this little child even to enter in. And what did he tell Nicodemus? He says, you got to be born again. You must be born again. You must be born of the water and of the Spirit. And he was speaking to a Gentile. I just wanted to see if you were listening and processing. Nicodemus was not a Gentile. He was a Jew who was under the Old Testament, who was one of the leaders of Israel. And those people had to observe all and obey all the things that were under the law, including what Paul called various washings, or which the same word is various baptisms. Okay? And he had to be born of the water and of the Spirit. Now, he had been practicing water baptism and water washings for years. I'm talking about Nicodemus and the Jews. A lot of people don't realize that. They think Jesus instituted or started water baptism. Water baptism and ceremonial washing have been going on for a long, long time. In fact, Yahweh performed the first baptism right back here in the, wilder, or in the Red Sea when Israel entered the wilderness of Sinai, and I can read that for you in the Bible. Um, I'm not going to do it right now, but this is homework. 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, first four verses, and he talks about here, Paul says that all of our fathers, meaning the Jewish forefathers, were baptized unto Moses in the cloud, which symbolizes what? Spirit. And in the sea, which is what? Water. So do you see how Yahweh had already set up this pattern of being baptized of the water and of the Spirit in order to enter into the kingdom? Because this is where Yahweh established His covenant with him. And He said, if you obey my voice, I'll make you what? A kingdom of priests. That's exactly right. So when Yahshua the Messiah said this to Nicodemus, he wasn't doing some new thing. He was confirming the same things he'd set up back here. Same pattern and operation. Okay? He was fulfilling when he said those things and when he did those things. Now I want to mention something to you. With that we covered this morning in our 9 o'clock workshop. Every baby that's come into this world when it was born, was previously in his mother's womb. And in the mother's womb, the baby was in a bag of what? Waters, right? And so when he was born, he was already born of what? Water. That's the flesh, right? That's born of the water. But Yahshua told Nicodemus, you've got to be born again or born of the Spirit. Make sense? If you're going to enter into the kingdom, okay? So that means this, you can be born of water and come on out into the physical, you can grow up, become educated, old, set in your ways, all kinds of things, but if you're going to enter into the kingdom of Yahshua, you still got to be born. You got to go through a change. And that means you got to be born of the Spirit, which means you then will become as this little child. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. That is being born here, being born ab from above, not just from beneath, okay? Because Yahshua told Nicodemus, that which is born of the flesh, that's flesh. That which is born of the spirit, that's spirit, okay? So Yahshua was praying to his father. He says, I thank you, Father. You revealed these, you hid these things from the wise and prudent. You revealed them unto babes, those who are born again. And I want to tell you this, those that are born need to be nourished, Babies have an instinct to suck, okay, if they're going to survive. They need to have that instinct to suck. And that's because the milk has already been provided to them. They don't have to work for their food. Likewise, when you're born again, you do not have to work to figure out the things of Yahweh. It's given to you. This is the sincere milk of the word that's being given, and it comes from the law, and from the testimony, like two breasts, 
You follow me? Okay. That's the way this is provided. And I'm talking about your spiritual child now. Okay. All right. So now, it, it, it's necessary to be revealed. Where are you at in the scripture? Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. Yes. All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father. So Yahweh hid everything from people. Okay? He revealed them unto babes. And I'll tell you this, nobody was born again at the time that Yahshua spoke this. And so he says, all things are delivered unto who? Unto me, or unto him, Yahshua. Right? That means this, folks. If you're going to know anything about Yahweh, you're going to have to get it from the one that has it. It's that simple. Look, if a baby is going to suck milk, he has to get it from somebody who has milk. Right? There's no other way. It's got to come from that source where it is. Yahshua said, all things are delivered unto him of his father, and what else does he say? And no man knoweth the son but the father. Now, that's an interesting thing, too. He says nobody knew the son except the father. And that's true. They didn't even know who Yahshua was. They were trying to figure it out. Well, we know you're a prophet. Well, we know you work miracles. And you know you're a teacher sent from Elohim. But... <laughs> This thing about you really being the son of Yahweh, you know what I'm saying? That, follow me? They couldn't quite get to that. And let me show you. The only ones that identified Yahshua as the son of Yahweh at that time were the demons. Right. And the reason the demons identified him is because they knew him from a prior world when Yahshua revealed himself in heaven and had them cast out of heaven. Now that's a fact. And when the demons identified him, he said, shut up and come out of the man. Because it wasn't time for him to actually be revealed to people yet. And then there's some other scriptures that could show you exactly how this works. You do live in a world where there are spirits. And whether you realize them, recognize them, see them, feel them, understand them or not, but they are real. And they are present and they are part of Yahweh's purpose to do both good and evil. And there are those that are both good and evil among those spirits just as there are among people. Okay? So he says that they revealed him unto Dave's, and no man knows the Son but the Father at that time. Please read. Neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son. And no man knows the Father at that time except the Son. Now that means this. It's a closed loop. Now somebody says, well, that's not important that you know him anyway. You just got to believe. Well, if I go to another prayer of Yahshua, which was the night before he was crucified, and this is another homework thing. Go read John 17th chapter, first three verses at least. Yahshua himself says there that eternal life is to know the Father and the Son. So if eternal life is to know Yahweh and Yahshua, you think it's important? I would say. Okay? And Yahshua says, nobody knows the Son but the Father, neither does anybody even know the Father except the Son and who? And he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. Now you see, if you're going to get it, it's got to be revealed by who? The son. By the Son. By the Son, Yahshua. This is not figured out. It's revealed by the Son. So in the end, you've, when you, it's revealed to you, you have to recognize that came from the Son of Yahweh. Do you realize, do you understand what I'm trying to say? And I'm going to get these other scriptures, and I want to show you something with a few moments that we have. Deuteronomy 29, 29, and then 1 Corinthians 2, start about maybe about 7. Deuteronomy 29, 29. The secret things belong unto Yahweh our Elohim. Now, even back there, they were acknowledging the things that were hidden or the things that were secret. Who had those? They belong unto Yahweh, our Elohim. Please read. But those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children But forever. you see, the only thing that, um, that it belongs unto us, he says, is those things which he has revealed. Do you follow me? Now, if you are going to have this, it's got to be revealed to you. And let me tell you something. 
Yahweh did not purpose to reveal things to most people in this world by some kind of apparitional appearance to you directly. Yahweh intended and purposed, always has worked it where what he has done is he has revealed it to some man and that man has been a prophet or mouthpiece of Yahweh to teach others. And that's exactly what Yahweh did with Dr. Kinley. It wasn't unique with Dr. Kinley, but even Dr. Kinley didn't know what he was supposed to do with it at first. Even when Yahweh showed it to him, he asked him the question. He says, man, what will you do with that which I give you? He didn't know the answer. So then Yahweh took him back and took him through the whole thing. And then he asked him the question again. Man, what will you do with that which I give you? And his answer then came in him or within him. And he said, I will teach your people your will and your way, Yahweh. Yahweh reveals it to give it. To teach it, not to hold it. Do you follow me? So if it's given and revealed, it's there to be given out. Okay? When he took Moses up here in the mountain, he told him before he took him up. He says, I, when you come up unto me in the mountain, be there, and I will give you tables of stone and law and commandments that you should hold on to them yourself, Moses. No, he says that you should teach the people. You follow me? That's the way it's always been. Okay? I'm trying to get you to become conscious that these wonderful things that you just heard this morning didn't come from a man. They came through a man. They didn't come from a man. They came from the Son of Yahweh. And if you ever grasp that, I mean really come to grips with that, it will change you forever. You'll be born again. Either that or another thing will happen. And that is this, you will reject it and you will go to the lake of fire throughout all eternity. Now that's another side of this thing that needs to be recognized. Okay? Not everybody accepted and received Yahshua. Okay? Some rejected him to their own eternal damnation. You do not want to be in there. Okay? But anyway, uh, go over to 1 Corinthians 2. 1 Corinthians 2 and 7. Mm -hmm. But we speak the wisdom of Yahweh in a mystery. Now that's not man's wisdom. That's not the things that, that man's wisdom has and so forth. But it's the wisdom of Yahweh. That's what we speak. He says that's what we speak. We speak the wisdom of Yahweh in a mystery. Please read. Even the hidden wisdom. Yes. Which Yahweh ordained before the world unto our glory. Yes, please read. Which none of the princes of this world knew. Now he says none, not even the rulers, the princes, the wise of the world or the age before Pentecost. I'm talking about time before Pentecost, that age or that world. Those people didn't know these things. Folks, the things that are given to you right now are so precious and they were not known and understood or revealed before the day of Pentecost. People in those prior ages, they did not know the things that are being just given to you freely right now. None of the people, including all the rulers and princes of that world, even knew the things that are given to you freely now. Please read. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the, the king of glory. King of glory. So, see, this is the thing. Now, do you understand the part of the reason why Yahweh had to hide it? Because if he hadn't hid it from them, somebody would have known. Uh oh, that's that's the king of glory. That's the Messiah. We better not crucify him. And if that had happened, if he hadn't been crucified, Yahweh's whole purpose would have come to nothing. Do you realize? He had to die, be buried, and raised from the dead in order to overcome death and in order to destroy the works of the devil which exercised the power of death. He had to do that, and so he had to hide those things. That's why even when the demons spoke up and says, We know the, you, Messiah, the son of the living Elohim, he said, Shut up, come out of him. You understand what I mean? He, they could not know who he was. That was part of Yahweh's her purpose was to hide it and to reveal it. To whom he will and on schedule. And folks, people before that time did not know the things that are now revealed in being given to you. Please read. But as it is written, 
eye hath not seen, yes. nor ear heard. Neither now, when he says not as it is written, he's talking about something that was written in the prophecy of the Old Testament. So back here before the cross, it was written, you could go read it, where it says, as she is reading, I have not seen and ear hath not heard, neither what? Neither have entered into the heart of man the things which Yahweh hath prepared for them that love him. Now, those people didn't know it. They didn't see it. They didn't hear it. They couldn't conceive it. It was beyond their comprehension, or what Dr. Kinney would say, they're beyond their carnal mind. Do you follow me? And that was written back there under the Old Testament. That was part of Yahweh's purpose. Now, read the next part. But Yahweh... But, now, when you say that, see, he says, they didn't hear it, see it, comprehend it, but, but is a conjunction, Right? which shows that there is a change. It was that way then, but now there's a change. But, read. But Yahweh hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. Oh, 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 but those things which were hidden from those people, Yahweh hath revealed them unto us by whom? By his Spirit. Please read. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of Yahweh. That's right, by His Spirit. And His Spirit was in this man right here. And now is given as the Holy Spirit. Now, let me get you one other scripture pertaining to this. First, I think it's First Peter 1 and 10. Or 2 Peter 1 and 19. I want to do that quickly and then I want to show you something. I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, the, which, of no, which yeah. salvation? Yes. First Peter 1 and 10. Mm -hmm. Of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. Okay, now, even those prophets that had the Holy Spirit temporarily prophesied about these things, but it, they did not fully understand it. Do you understand what I'm saying? They inquired about it. They didn't understand it. Please read. Searching what? Or what manner of time the Spirit of the Messiah, which was in them, did signify. Yes. When it testified beforehand the sufferings of the Messiah yes. and the glory that should come. Right. Unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves, but unto us, they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by now, them. Now, now, let's go back and think about this. Follow this through. What was revealed unto those prophets of the Old Testament? They spoke things that the Holy Spirit gave them to speak. They didn't fully understand it, but what was revealed unto them was this, that what they were speaking and what they were testifying to was not really for them and for their people of their time as much as it is for now. Because they were not really talking about Isaiah and Jeremiah and Abraham. And you understand what I'm saying? What they were doing was talking about Yahshua the Messiah in allegories, symbols, types, shadows, examples. But what they didn't know was exactly who and when and how the reality or the fulfillment of it would be manifest. All right, so read that clause in there again. Go right through it. Unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves, but unto us, they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Spirit sent down from heaven. Now, those things which they were prophesying toward, they are now preached to you by them that have received the Holy Spirit sent down from heaven. You follow me? Okay. And so Yahweh has revealed them unto us by His Spirit over here, even those mysteries that were not understood back there. Now, some of those things were things such as what he covered and showed here. And I want to uh, show you. This is a demonstration, okay? Like nothing I had ever seen in my life before I came into this school. There is a single pattern, which is 50 chapters of the Bible. 50 chapters of the Bible tell you about this tabernacle and the ministry of the priest therein. And I wasn't 
informed. I mean, I was, came up in a Bible-believing family, but I didn't know nothing about this tabernacle pattern. I knew there was a tabernacle. I knew they offered up some sacrifices, and they had an Ark of the Covenant. Didn't know really anything more about it. Why? Because the way I was taught was that was what Yahweh did or God did under the Old Testament, but I'm under the New Testament. In other words, the idea was that's not important now. Well, the reality is that has always been important. That's the way Yahweh has formed things. And when you understand this, it'll work well. And I want to just show you a little. As he said, there was a most holy place, holy place court round about. In the court round about, which was the part that everybody could go into and see, okay, there was blood of the sacrifice placed on the altar. There was water for washing in the labor, and there was the holy anointing oil used to anoint out here, symbolic of the Spirit. So the blood, the water, and the Spirit were manifested here, okay? And then in the holy place, you would go through a 40, okay? All right, so blood, water, Spirit, and 40. Now, Yahweh had people working by that pattern even before they built the tabernacle. Because the people that Yahweh brought out of the land of Egypt... In order to get out of the land of Egypt alive, without the firstborn of their houses being killed, they had to sacrifice a what? Passover lamb, and then they had to do what with that lamb? They had to take, well, they had to kill it, need it, but they had to take the blood of the lamb and strike it on the four corners of their door, their houses. Just like the priest here had to put the blood of the sacrifice on the four corners of the altar on the horns. So there's four points of the lamb's blood here, four points of the sacrifice's blood right here, right? Now, do you really think that that lamb saved anybody from their sins? Do you really think that those animal sacrifices saved anybody from their sins or took away sins? The Bible says it didn't. Well, so why did Yahweh bother with it? <coughs> I'll tell you why. Among other things, he used those things to testify of his own son, who would be the true Passover sacrificed for us, who would be the true Lamb of Yahweh, who would be the true one that this all pointed to. So, like he said, when Yahshua the Messiah came in and was crucified, he had to be killed, not just killed, couldn't be stoned to death, because that wouldn't fit the pattern that's set up back here. He had to be crucified. And... I, you know, yes, I, I was in the Jehovah's Witnesses as a child, okay? And one of the things that they taught was that when he was crucified, he was not crucified on a cross with a cross member like this, that he was crucified on a pole or on a stake like this. But you see, that doesn't fit the pattern. Here's why. Because if that was the case, that would put blood up here with the nails, Right? Blood here on the head where they beat the crown of thorns into his head. And blood on the feet. So that would be one, two, three points of blood vertically. Is that what happened in here? No. They had to put the blood on the lintel and the two side posts of the door with the basin at the bottom. Do you see the one, two, three, four points of blood? Now the priest had to put the blood around the rim of the altar with uh, uh, blood on the horns of the corner. One, two, three, four points of blood. And just to show that he was put on the cross, there was a grating here which has cross pieces. Now, I'll give you another one in a testimony. Okay? There was a man named Samson. Samson was a type shadow and allegory of Yahshua the Messiah. Right? And Samson was a victor over the forces of evil. Uh, right? And of his time, what happened was he ended up, remember, having his hair shaved and he lost his, his, his strength and then they put out his eyes and so forth, right? And when they were making, quote, sport of him, right, in their thing that was similar to a coliseum, then what he had the little boy do was take his hands and put his hands on the supporting structures, right? And it said he bowed himself greatly and pressed those out and took those supporting pillars for the whole thing and pushed them out so that the whole building collapsed on all those people, including himself. So in his death, it says, he killed more of the enemy than in his life. Don't you see that Yahshua the Messiah 
in his death, burial, and resurrection destroyed the devil in his works more in his death, burial, and resurrection than during his physical life. And he had to do it in this position. So Samson testified of him. You see that? Okay. I'm trying to show you that Samson didn't know why he had to have it happen that way. When they wrote about Samson, they didn't know why it had to happen that way, but the one thing that the Holy Spirit did show them was they were testifying of someone to come. That would be the reality. And now the reality of it is taught to you by the Holy Spirit. You follow me? Now, so that's the blood here. Now, water in the laver, water in the Red Sea. Holy Spirit symbolized by the anointing oil, Spirit symbolized by the angel, which is ministering spirit, in the cloud, leading them on through. Blood, water, spirit, how many years here? Blood, water, spirit, how many feet to the altar and back? Forty. Okay? All right. Now, that same pattern goes all the way on back. Adam's blood, his kin, went to the four corners of the earth. Okay? Yahweh told him he'd have to work by the sweat of his brow. Okay? And the spirit drove them out of the garden. The angel drove them out of the garden. And Adam was a figure of who? Yahshua yeah. the Messiah who was called the last Adam or the second Adam. Right? Okay. Now, Noah, when he preached, got the blood off his head or the responsibility because the prophet had to teach. Otherwise, he was responsible. For, you follow me? That's another reason why when Yahweh reveals something, you better teach it. See? Because Noah's blood would have been, you follow me? But he got her off. All right. So then, was there water here with the flood? I think so. Right? Who revealed to, Yah, to Noah to, what would happen? The Spirit or Yahweh. And in fact, it says he closed the door. Okay? By the way, how many days did it rain? Huh? Blood, water, spirit, 40. Now here, the uh, 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 ram was sacrificed in the place of Isaac. That's a substitutionary sacrifice, so his blood was shed. Isaac was under the pressure of death and sweating. Okay? And then the spirit of the angel is the one that came and, and, and delivered him. You follow me? Blood, water, spirit. Okay? And his brother was 40. So blood, water, spirit, 40. Now, folks, when Yahshua comes in, he comes in as the Lamb of Yahweh to take away the sin of the world. That's what... John the Baptist said about Yahshua that he was the Lamb of Yahweh that take away the sin of the world. To take away the sin of the world, he had to shed his blood. No other way. Because as Paul writes, without the shedding of what? Blood, there is no remission of sin. Okay? So then he has to go to the, John to be baptized, and he's going to be baptized in dirt. No, it, it, because the, the, the principle of the water baptism is all the way on down through here. Do you understand what I'm saying? So he's got to do it. And he's not doing it like other people are doing it. Other people are being baptized, but it doesn't fit them like it fits him. He's baptized, he says to John, to fulfill all righteousness. He didn't have sin to confess. Everybody else had to confess their sin. Folks, there was other people that were crucified too. But this principle didn't fit them the same way it fits him. Because his blood, his crucifixion, is the one that takes away the sin of the world. The two that crucified on either side, they didn't take away no sin. Okay? So now, he enters into the wilderness of Judea uh, because he's led up by the Spirit and he's fasting there for 40 days and 40 nights. So when John sees him crucified, he sees the soldier pierce him in the side and out comes blood and water and he testifies that Yahshua had given up the ghost or the spirit. And when he raised from the dead, how many days did he tarry on the earth? Forty days and forty nights. Do you see a pattern? Did you ever see that before you came here? You didn't. It had to be given by the spirit of Yahweh. I didn't figure it out. You didn't figure it out. Schofield didn't figure it out. Yeah, scholar, any of the scholars, pick any of them. <laughs> Folks, this is delivered unto you by the Son of Yahweh himself. I want you to recognize that. Last thing that's important is to understand something 
It's already been mentioned, but I want you to understand this. I don't have time to give you all the scripture, but it's right there in the scripture. No, I'm going to get you one more scripture. Give me 1 John 5, 9. People read 1 John 5, 7, and 8 all the time. I want you to read verse 9. Now, 7 and 8, here's what it says. These three bear record in heaven, the Father, the Son, and the Holy, or Word and Holy Spirit, and these three are one. These three bear witness in earth, the Spirit, the water, and the blood, and these three agree in one. That's because this Ark of the Covenant had three parts joined into a unit, so these three are one, this symbolic of heaven. The Spirit, the water, and the blood symbolized here in the court roundabout representative of the earth. This testified of who? And I want you to see that that's what he's talking about when he reports it. 1 John 5, 9. 1 John 5 and 9, if we receive the witness of men, the witness of Yahweh is greater. See, I don't care how smart somebody is, and they can witness all they want. But I tell you what, you can receive the witness of men, but the witness of Yahweh trumps it. Please read. For this is the witness of Yahweh, which he hath testified of his son. What is the witness of Yahweh that he's testified of his son? If you go back to the previous two verses, that's what it says. The spirit, the water, and the blood. This is the witness of Yahweh that Yahweh has testified of you and me. No, he's testified it of his son, Yahshua. Now, don't make the mistake, as he pointed out, of being like the Jews that were educated and wise in their own mind. He says, yeah, you search the scriptures. He says, you do it because in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which what? Testify of Yahshua. This is not your blood, your water, your spirit. This is his blood, his water, his spirit that takes care of you. Now once you see it, and not before you see it, his spirit is in you. And then that is the witness that Yahweh hath given unto us. Now I hope that helps. It's more explanation, but I hope it's been encouraging. Praise Yahshua. Thank you, Dr. Welsh. That brings a close to our class for today. Are there any comments or questions? Enjoyed class. I would like to, again, thank our visiting brethren and our first-time visitors for joining with us today. It was nice to have you. Hope to see you guys come back. You can All right, class announcements are as follows. Classes are held every Wednesday and Friday from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. and Sundays 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Our beginner and instructional meetings are posted on the whiteboard in the back. I believe this Saturday, no, Saturday, I don't know where I'm at. This next coming Sunday is our third fundamentals class for the month of December. I can't read the board, but uh, the 20th, Friday the 20th, is our after class question and answer period. Uh, a reminder that the school is supported by our members. Pledges are due at the beginning of each month. Donations are welcomed and greatly appreciated. For either one, please see our treasurer from the Director of Public Relations. You can now find us on Ustream, YouTube, Facebook, and at our website, lansingbible.weebly.com. All direct donations for the Ustream project are greatly appreciated. Uh, you can also find our classes, well, to find our classes, if you go to Ustream or YouTube, just type in IDMR Lansing. We ask that you keep all food and drink confined to the lobby area other than water, and we ask that you please do not enter the room during the moderation, prayer, or scripture reading. Uh, events coming up, Northside Chicago, what is the only name for salvation? This is April 4th through April 6th of 2014. Vanderkamp is also having an event August 19th through August, through August 24th of 2014. Um, December 25th and January 1st are Wednesdays. Our classes will not be from 7 to 9 those two days, but from 11 to 1. So just to make that a <coughs> reminder, okay. Well, I just did that. All right, All right. Uh, let's see here. And we do uh, have a new uh, class. 
cleanup sign up sheet for 2014. Huh? Whoopee. Yahoo, boy howdy. <laughs> All right, so uh, this will be posted on the board in the back and sign up at your will. All right, that concludes our announcements for today. Let us all rise for the doxology so that we may be dismissed. I will be quoting the last two verses. The wind as it blows through the trees. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, Belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all time and now and ever. Let us all say, Hallelujah.
welcome to the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research. This is a school and not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a non-profit, non-denominational, religious, and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. The school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, in the state of